Hello, this is Jürgen Hartwig speaking and I am the inventor of the new plate cooling system which I'm going to present here. However, you will learn something about the next generation of cooling high performance computers. The video clip shows the measurement result of the prototype I have and you will see that the performance of the cooling is very good. It is also shown that the service will keep hot pluggable with this system. Here you see the main board, which is a dual processor board from Supermicro. It picks up two quad-core CPUs from Intel, the type is E5320 and they are on 1.86 GHz. So the computer does have eight cores in total. Anyway, the computer needs to have a heatsink, either the old-fashioned air cooler with the noisy fans, as you can see it here, or the new blade cooler. For booting the server and making the CPU's heating, we have to stick the board into its rack now. One important thing of every plate server is that these servers are hot pluggable and could be pulled out during other servers in the rack up and running. This is illustrated here. The NPC supports this feature completely. First, I'd like to explain the measurement tool itself. The measurement tool is a program showing the CPU core clock frequency and the throttling of the CPU. This is in the upper graph. The second graph shows the percentage of CPU load and operating system load of the selected core. The third graph is for the CPU frequency ID, which could be 6 or 7 for this CPU. This is more or less an internal multiplier for the core clock. Furthermore, the voltage of the selected core is also shown here. However, the diagram in the bottom is the most important one. This shows the temperature which is taken from inside of the CPU in the area of the selected CPU core. This diagram is what we have to watch carefully after we have set the CPU on a load of 100%. Now let me switch from core to core just to show that they behave different. So in this moment you see that the server is still running and that we have for example for core number 0 a temperature of 21.8 degrees Celsius. Now we start to put the maximum CPU load on the cores. And in the background you see the task manager, the well-known task manager, also showing that the CPUs are unlocked. What of course also going to happen is that the power dissipation from round about 130 watt will increase and it increases up to around about 250 watt. By switching from core to core you can see that first of all the CPU core clock is increased and sometimes the CPU is throttling. It is a 100% load of load and the frequency uh, is the frequency ID is set to 7 instead of 6 as we have had it before and the voltage increased to 1.2 to 5 volt. The most important graph is the temperature showing that we have a temperature of every core around about 33 degree Celsius now. So for example the core number 2 within one of the, those uh, CPUs has just increased up on 31 degree Celsius and this is pretty less. So let's see what happens if I switch off the load of the CPU now.
So the graph in the bottom shows that the cores are cooling down till the original temperature is reached. Let's have a look at the temperature of, of the other cores too. Up to now, we have seen that the system does have an easy handling and the administrator in the data center don't have any disadvantage. Then we saw that the system is more efficient than any other system. You haven't been able to hear the noise reduction of the NBC, but you can imagine that this is tremendous. Furthermore, please consider that this is only a prototype and the final product could be smaller than this. And last but not least, the computer itself could provide a higher computing performance due to a higher performance of the cooling system. Now, let's have a look at the comparison of the NBC with a conventional blower system. The CPU temperature of a blower system usually increases up to 65 degrees Celsius, which is a critical temperature inside the chip. Those systems do have a heat transfer to an air cooler, airflow and a water air chiller. This chiller has to be cooled by the in-house cooling system. Normally the blade server does have an air outstreaming with a temperature of 53 degrees Celsius and this is cooled down by the water air chiller to 33 degrees Celsius before the air is streaming inside the server again. To achieve these values, the water air chiller has to be supplied with a water temperature around about 20 degrees. The NBC does not transfer the heat via air, which is a big advantage. Therefore, the CPU only heats up to around about 35 degrees Celsius in case the NPC is supplied with water of 20 degrees Celsius. Or in another example, in case the NPC is supplied with a temperature of 40 degrees Celsius, the CPU only gets up to 55 degrees Celsius, which means less operative expense in the data center. If you are in one of those groups of interest, feel free to call me. In the rest of the video clip, I'd like to show something about the function. As you have seen before, the NPC does have one component of the chiller mounted on rack side. This is exactly the part you see here. The tube in the middle provides the in-streaming liquid, which is coming from the cooling unit of the data center. This liquid is cooling down the contact plate and escaping on the other tubes. This is not very particular so far and in order to drive the circulation of the second chiller unit here inside there is also a little turbine mounted in the inflowing liquid stream. And this turbine wheel does have one component of a magnetic clutch on it. Let's switch to the second part of the chiller, which is mounted inside the blade server. The area on the right hand side is the contact plate for exchanging heat and the big white plate does have cooler units for the CPUs on the bottom side. How is it working? The construction has a pump wheel in the center of the cooling unit with the other part of the clutch, or in other words, the pump wheel gets in rotation forced by the turbine. The rotating pump wheel is lighting the heated liquid to the contact plate, where it is cooled down. After presenting measurement results and explaining the functionality, I am happy to get your comments and questions now. Goodbye.